So I had an interesting question posed to me by a reader of businessprogrammer.com. Let's call him Adrian, mainly because that's his name. Adrian downloaded some data from his credit card company provider. I've changed the information here, so it's not actual data. What he wants to do is insert blank rows beneath each of the rows here in this data and copy in the row above it, but change the amount column to the negative amount. So I guess it's like a debit and credit in accountancy terms. So where in cell F3, where you have 154, the row below it will contain minus 154. In addition to that, he wants to record an account number in the account column and also have a zero in the GST amount. So for example, if you look at row three, column J, so J3, you've got a 14. Well, the copied row will just contain a zero. So this is what we want the end product to look like. You've got your copied row. Also, the row that's copied is to be put into, is to be colored red. So this is what the code is going to look like. I've created a top level subroutine called sub adjust data. All of the work is done within the subroutine. Insert blank row with credit. Earlier, I mentioned an account. The account is going to be passed in as an argument, and I've made up the number in this instance, 4578. And the second argument to this subroutine is the name of the sheet, which is raw data. And you can notice that it's in quotes. As part of good coding practice, I have made the subroutines that are called by adjust data private. You will also notice that I've put the code in a standard module. Nowhere in this code do we actually use select. When you're working with Excel VBA, or in fact most Microsoft Office products, you don't need to select anything. You can manipulate the Excel objects much more efficiently by controlling them totally in code. I've created a subroutine called get header and range rows. What this is going to do is return range references to both the header and separately to all of the data excluding the header. So this is done in sub get range header and range rows with the underscores in there. You can see I pass in three arguments, range header, range rows, and sheet name. I do this first of all by getting a reference to range data. And this is done via the command this workbook, this workbook being always being the current workbook that the code is in. Worksheets, sheet name, this is the argument that's passed into the calling subroutine in certain blank rows with credit, which is in this instance raw data. Raw data being the sheet name. So the variable range data here will refer to the complete range, the complete selection of your credit card data. And this is done by this workbook dot worksheets raw data dot range a1 dot current region. Dot current region is the uh, command that gives you this selection. So range header is derived by resizing the current region to one row. In essence, what this code is doing is getting that selection and saying resize it to one row. So creates a separate range variable that's addressing that particular top row there. Then I want to get a separate reference to all of the data excluding the header. So what I'm going to do is say get range data, resize it to the size to the size of range data minus one row, then offset it by one row. The cool thing with, about working with range objects and working with VBA in this way is that all of these objects are smart. So for example, range data knows how many rows it's got. It's actually a property of the range object. So let me demonstrate here. If I just type the period sign, you get to see all the various pieces of information that you can derive from the range object. So in this instance, range data dot rows dot count. So that particular piece of information will tell you how many rows are in the range object. You don't have this power if you do everything just using select. So if range data has more than one row, in other words, one row being the header row, so I don't want to do anything if there's only one row because that means there's no data being returned and the macro would fail. But this protects this line if range data dot rows dot count is greater than one. That protects you from a situation whereby you've only got one row in the data. Given that there's more than one row, so I e you have a more than one row under the header 
then we execute this particular line of code set range rows equals range data dot resize how many rows are in the data and offset at one what that does in effect is it's saying to the selection transform this selection here to a selection that looks like that so when you offset the selection it does that so you have one more row but then I say resize it to range data dot rows dot count minus one to account for the blank row at the bottom and then range data ends up looking like that now because range header and range rows were passed in as arguments by ref you basically have to can pass arguments either by ref or by val by value means send the variable in simple terms it means send the variable into the subroutine but if it changes within the subroutine it's not going to be changed within the calling routine but when you pass a variable by reference any changes that you make to the variable within this routine get range get underscore range header underscore and underscore range rows will be affected in the calling routine so i've explained everything that's happened in this particular routine and it lies in the code there these variables range header and range rows will now correctly reflect what i've explained to you in the previous section so the next thing that we're going to do is i want to get a reference to range row now range row is going to be going to look like that row there so this particular row reference is going to go down one row insert a blank row then move down two rows insert a blank row and with another variable we'll start filling in everything in addition i'm going to need references to three other variables that's range account column range gst amount call and range amount i'll get a reference to account also and i'm going to get a reference to the amount column as well using the find and so that's how you do it range header so range header being row one within that find the text account but look at excel whole the whole word in this particular row range amount we have the tag amount but if we look at the actual spreadsheet and notice again i'm saying look at excel whole because we're looking for amount in column f but as you can see in column j we also have another incidence of amount but this time it's gst amount so when i say look at excel whole the whole cell it's not just going to find that it has to match everything so now I'm going to loop through all of the rows this for loop is going to count how many rows are in the range so range rows that rows that count and that's going to be something like seven I guess so what we're going to do now is we're just going to step through the code because I think that will throw a little more light on the subject so here we go so we're going to pass four five seven eight if, we're, if I just hit the space bar you can see We've got account number as the an argument and sheet name, and the IntelliSense is also making that visible. Locals window is a very useful thing to put into your Visual Basic editor. You can find it from view locals window. So you can see account number and sheet name. You can see the, va the values of the variables there. And you can see I've got other range objects which are in the declaration, but they have not yet been set up. As we go through the code, you'll see them getting populated. Let's get a reference to the header, which is range data, i.e. all of the data, resize it down to one row, get a reference to that. And now we're getting a reference to the first row of data, which is range data, resize range data to how many rows are in the data, which you can see is eight, but take away one from eight and you're gonna have seven rows, and then offset, i.e. shift the whole range down by one because I don't want the header included in the range. And then as part of good housekeeping, we no longer need range data. So set that to nothing, but range rows and range header will be passed up to the calling subroutine. So there's the calling subroutine there. So if I just double click on it, you can see you've got um, you got the pointer. So those, those particular variables, range rows and range header are available to this program because they've been updated in those positions. In this instance, I'm going to get a reference to the first row of the data. Range account call is range header, so that's row one, find count, and GST amount call similarly find GST amount, and for range amount, find amount, and the one that's amount and nothing else. So now we're going to iterate over the um, data. So I've inserted a, bank, a blank row, and now I've also created a temporary row. So the blank row was done by getting the reference to that row there, offsetting the reference by one row, 
which probably effectively point to there, then issuing the insert command. And now, rather than doing a copy and paste, which uses the clipboard, which can be a bit inefficient, we're just going to simply instruct the tempo to write in the values of range row. So right now, this particular row here is called range temp row, and this particular row here is called range row. So we're going to say, write the value of the contents of this row to this row. Now, we want to make it red, but the problem is, of course, that the value in amount is incorrect, and we don't have the account number. So let's put in the account number now, and now, I'm using a useful function called intersect. So we want to intersect range temp row with range amounts, that entire column. So that gives you, so if we just, if I just show you range temp row, so that's range temp row highlighted. Range amounts, that entire column is getting the amount in row one using the find method, and then the entire column method selects the entire column. So we're effectively then working with the intersection of range amount, that entire column, and range tempo, which gets us cell F3, which we then apply the results of cell F2 times minus one to give us 100, negative 154. We then set the GST amount in cell J3 to zero, and then we're going to offset range temp row by two rows. We then just rapidly iterate. Obviously here I'm using F8 to step through the code, but um, as you can see, if we keep going over the same, the same loop, it all gets done. And because we were using range ro rows that rows that count, initially it would have been set up at something like eight rows, and it doesn't iterate beyond that. Now all that remains is to do some housekeeping and clean up the range objects. You'll notice I've put colons uh, between each of the lines of code for this. Don't recommend it for normal programming, but just when you're tidying up variables, that's very, very okay and it keeps your code neat and concise. Well, that's it. Job done. Hey, thanks for watching. If you're not watching this tutorial on businessprogrammer.com, why not head over there? You can go specifically to businessprogrammer.com, question hyphen time, hyphen Excel, hyphen VBA, hyphen copy, hyphen rows, and there you can get the actual spreadsheet, including the VBA code that goes with this tutorial. Also, don't forget to sign up for advanced notification of tutorials. You'll be glad you did.